Yo, what is up guys? It's Pedro here. And in today's video, I'll be talking about some OTA standouts from the Washington Commanders and the biggest takeaways so far from OTAs. Also, the Washington Commanders released kicker Brandon McManus yesterday. So I'm going to talk about that as well. If you guys are new, make sure to subscribe, hit that like button and that notification bell as well. And comment down below who you think the Washington Commanders should bring in for their new you know, kicking position that's open. All those things help out a ton and it's free. So go ahead and do it. Let's get right into it. I'll talk about the kicker stuff at the end. Uh, didn't make a video about it yesterday because I was at a concert, 21 Savage concert, and the news came out right when I was there. So I wasn't able to do it. So decided to put it in this video. We're going to talk about that. Of course, There's, we're never able to get a you know kicker here for a long time that's good so we're gonna have to figure out something there and hopefully soon and i'm glad they got ahead of it so we're not you know left looking for a kicker in august but let's talk about otas uh we've heard some really good things from Jaden daniels uh you know he has been making some really good throws he has they were saying not a lot of passes have hit the dirt not a lot of incompletions there's been a lot of zip on the passes and he's been working very very hard he's been one of the first ones uh in there every day which is good uh you know uh john allen says he gets there at 6 45 and Jaden daniels is always there before him so good to see that and let's see uh we'll, i'll show you guys a clip right here him throwing to uh Jahan dotson let's see can i get that yeah there we go trying to get that a little bit uh you know bigger better quality uh for you guys right here but you see him that's a perfect pass and Jahan catches there's not an easy catch to make i believe that was against michael davis so good i mean really perfect throw you can't really get much of a you know better throw than that and then also a good uh catch by Jahan, and then the corner or someone in the comments was like that would be intercepted against a good defense that corner blew the play the thing is you always have to you know react to how the corner is playing and that's i'm sorry that's not getting intercepted maybe tipped but he threw it really only where uh Jahan could get it. i mean i guess he could have thrown it if he wanted to be a little bit less risky he could have thrown it maybe a little bit more towards the sideline, but that wasn't getting intercepted. That was a very good pass by Jaden, and it was you know a good catch by John. Overall, we've heard great things from Jaden. It's just OTAs, but you know you keep hearing good things in these periods, and it's you know you get a little bit optimistic. And you know obviously it's just OTAs. There's not a lot of defenders playing. And, you know, you don't got the pads on, but the more and more you hear of good things, the better. And, you know, if you start to hear bad things, that's when you start to get a little bit concerned. And with all the, you know, in the past with Sam Howell, we heard some good things. And, you know, I was optimistic, cautiously optimistic about how, I mean, the only time I really got optimistic about him was midway through last year when he was bowling out. But during the off season, I was never truly, you know, super optimistic about him because we were hearing mixed things from the reporters and when i was there too i was seeing some good plays from hell and seeing some not so good plays and with you know carson wentz probably even more negative than how uh in terms of the reports we were getting from him we saw some good things but also a lot of bad rest in peace dwayne haskins but definitely going into his rookie year we were hearing you know you know maybe some reporters were you know doing some optimistic reporting but from what when i what i remember it was Kime and all these guys saying that he is nowhere near ready to start week one. So if you're hearing good things, you know, it's at least better than hearing bad things, if you get what I'm saying. And we haven't heard any bad things. So if he continues to do this and starts to play well in the preseason and once the season starts, it's going to be very good for the Washington Commanders. And, you know, not only is he playing well in these, you know, OTA sessions and mini camp, but he's also getting in the building early, which you love to see. And then, you know, I think, I mean, I've talked about this a ton on the channel, but he got drafted, the commanders bring him in for his press conference and he's on the plane coming back from the press conference and is already calling out plays and getting in some work. So you know he's gonna be getting in that work and you absolutely love to see that. And that's kind of a Jaden Daniels talk 
uh, not much of an update, but just wanted to talk about his performance as a whole, and it's been good, and you know, he also hasn't really been relying on his feet. A lot of the, you know these quarterbacks, uh, I think Kaim talked about this on his podcast. Sometimes if they're super, if they're not great at avoiding, or not avoiding pressure, but if they're not great at handling pressure or they rely on their feet too much in these OTAs and minicamp, they just run away too quick. Well, Jaden hasn't done that. A lot of times he stayed in the pocket and that's been good. So let's go over some other things. Jahan's been looking solid in camp, made a video about him. You know, it doesn't look huge, but it looks a little bit uh, buffer, a little bit stronger. And this is just, this is the thing I could find when I searched up his name on Twitter was his golf swing. But uh, Grady's getting some top golf or whatever, but or I don't know if he's at the driving range there. If it's top golf, uh, I think that's yeah. That's that's what am I saying? That's not top golf. That's a driving range. Not sure where, but he's getting some work uh, in the off season, whatever. But it looks a little bit bigger, and he was not satisfied at all with his performance last year, and he shouldn't have been. Some of it was on him. Some of it was on the coaching staff. You know, Eric Bieniemy. The routes he had, you know, Dodson running, but he also dropped some passes. He dropped some passes he shouldn't have, and maybe some of those passes weren't technically labeled as drops. But he w would be the first one to tell you he's got to make those catches. Like the one against the Giants, I think it was the last second he drops it in the end zone. It was either a two point conversion or, or for a touchdown on fourth down. So he's got to be better than that. He's got to be better than that. And uh, this is a big year for him. This is a very big year for him. Made a video talking about how this is a make or break year for Jahan. And someone commented, and I agree. They said, it's a make or break year for a lot, basically all the Rivera players. And I, yeah, I agree with that. Maybe some are safe, like Sam Cosme is safe. And, you know, John Allen, he's not a Rivera player, obviously. He's a pre Rivera era player, but, you know, he's safe, those guys. But in terms of the Rivera, Players, yeah, not many guys are safe. Probably just Sam Cosme and, you know, maybe a couple other guys. But, like, Brian Robinson, he's solid for sure. But he's not necessarily 100% safe. Like, he is, what, this is going to be his third year. He's, you know, has four years on the contract total. So he'll have one more year after this year. So he's not completely safe. I mean, I don't think they're going to, you know, move on from him. But I'm just saying, like, uh, there's not a lot of guys that are completely safe, and I would just say Sam Cosme is that one guy that they probably are really feeling like, okay, this guy is going to be a part of our future. But Forbes, Jahan Dotson, Deami Brown, Benjamin St. Juice, Jamin Davis, like those guys, they got to prove it. They got to prove it. And Jahan, he will be on the team even if he doesn't do well or will trade him and get some assets. He's not going to get released, but in terms of being a number two or even a number one in this league, he's going to have to show it this year, at least for the commanders. Uh, some other things, uh, OTAs, Jamin Davis doing work with the DNs. Uh, made a whole video about that too, but if you didn't watch that and you don't want to go ahead and watch it, I would you know recommend watching because I went more in depth into it. But basically, he's been doing some individual work with the defense uh, defensive line with the edge rushers and maybe you see a little bit more of a Micah Parsons type role for him this year and the two linebacker sets you're probably gonna have Frankie Luvu and Bobby Wagner so in that case you might as well try to get you might as well try to get your best players on the field for as you know many snaps as possible and maybe they think Jamie Davis is one of the best players on the field so they're gonna put him at edge rusher when they don't have him at linebacker to get him on the field as much as possible. I think that's good. He's gone sacks in the past. He's shown the ability to get to the quarterback when he does get the opportunity to do so. So I would not mind them doing this for, you know, Jamin Davis and see how he's doing at it. And this is also, it's mini camp. So it's a little bit, or I guess OT, it's not even mini camp yet. It's a little bit of an experimental time of the season of the year not even the season but just of the off season so they're seeing what these guys can do and yeah experimenting a little bit got Forbes at punt returner so they'll see how he does if he looks good maybe he'll give him some homework for the period between mini camp and the uh, start of training camp see what he does and uh, see if he can be an edge rusher hybrid I guess hybrid between an edge rusher and a linebacker for them and now let's get into this kicker situation here so Brandon Brandon McManus who the Washington Commanders signed this offseason 
he had the allegations against him. Uh, you know, I can't say exact. You know, I can't say what it is without getting demonetized. I believe, at least, uh, from the YouTube guidelines. But he's being accused of some not great stuff with a couple women, I believe, on an air aircraft going from uh, somewhere to. It might have been Jacksonville to London. So. The commanders decide to get ahead of it, which, you know, if they believe he's guilty, he should obviously not be on the team. And you don't want to be in the situation, like I said earlier in the video, where it's August and it comes out that these things are true or it gets resolved and these things are true and the league suspends them for the full year and you have to release them or you just decide to release them anyways and the league doesn't suspend them and they decide to do that later. Well, now you're screwed because you have to find a kicker last minute and get him accustomed to the new long snapper, the new special teams coordinator, and trust way. So that is at least we got ahead of it, and the commanders will hopefully bring in a new kicker soon. Randy Bullock is a guy that's available. Still, I don't know. He's not that good. You got the Bates guy, I think I've been hearing about him from the UFL there's some guys they'll be able to find. I would just say bring in some guys right now. I wouldn't mind keeping a couple spots for a kicker uh, on the roster because, you know, yeah, keep two or three. I would have a competition. Maybe not three. Two. Keep two kickers. See how they're doing uh, and try to get that competition going. And then once you get to, you know, the period before training camp, release one of them and have your kicker going into training camp you know who it is and they can get all those reps in that they need to but it's not a great problem to have and I was never really a big fan of the Brandon McManus signing because his stats like he was a pretty reliable kicker for a while but like it's not like his stats were crazy good for the Jaguars this past season and Joey Sly like I believe their stats were pretty comparable and you have to consider Joey Sly had to deal with Cameron Cheeseman who is one of the, like, I, I like the guy's a cool, really nice guy, but he was a terrible long snapper this past season. I mean, at least this past season for the Commanders. And there's at least two kicks that were, he missed 100% because of Cheeseman and probably a couple others that were affected by it as well that he missed. So his percentage was, you know, skewed in the wrong direction because of Cameron Cheeseman. So I think his stats really, were better than what they showed. Or I guess, you know, he was better than what the stats showed. That's what I meant to mean or say. So maybe they can bring back Joey Sly because he is familiar with Tress Way and some of the other special teams guys. Not the coordinator or not Tyler Ott, the, you know, long snapper, but he is familiar with Tress Way and that is an important thing. But yeah, that's it for today's video. Hope you guys did enjoy. If you did, hit that like button, subscribe if you guys are new, and comment down below. Kai Forbath, if you stayed till the end of the video, OG kicker for the commander or for the Redskins 2012 and a couple years after that, I believe. But yeah, thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed and peace.